Well, hello there, everyone. It is Saturday, June the 4th, and you're 2022. Hopefully, you're doing outstanding. I'm doing outstanding, too. Thank you. And please subscribe. Click the thumbs up. Feel free to comment. And as always, share videos with people that need this information. And remember, I am not a financial advisor. I'm not a CPA, and I'm not an attorney. Alrighty. And here's the bad news for everybody. You already realize this. Everything is going up. Everything's getting expensive. Prices are going up. And yet, if you're the average American, you have no investments, or you have a 401k through your job, you have a TSP, maybe you have a Roth IRA with an index fund in it, maybe you have a brokerage account with an index fund in it, and guess what? They have gone down more than likely. What are we to do? Prices are up. Investments are down. <gasps> oh no! Maskey has the solution. Maskey has a solution. And Maskey's going to share it with you. What you have to do is become a real investor. Forget about the 401ks. Forget about the TSP. Sure, Get the company match, get some free money, but look at investing in real estate, look at potentially investing in alternative investments. All right, you've heard me on this channel talk a lot about rental property. I personally like rental property better than stocks, and I was a stock investor for 30 years, but I like rental property better, and I think it, rentals are a greater way to increase wealth to become financially independent. And if you become financially independent, that does not mean you need to stop working. It means you now have options, okay? But I'm gonna tell you how, <laughs> I'm spinning my finger, how uh, rental properties can help you to increase your wealth, your cash flow, your net worth, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Because one thing that happens is rents increase, rents go up. Historically, on average, nationally, you look at history, rents go up. They may not go up in a straight line. They may stagnate at times. They rarely drop. Depends on the market. Some markets may. But for the most part, they rarely drop. But they keep going up. Sometimes they go up more than other times. Okay? I'm going to run through some of my rental properties. I looked at the past 12 months and I did it looking ahead from roughly September of last year to August of this year. So some of this is coming soon. Some of it's already happened last fall. Okay. But when I, I wrote stuff down, <laughs> see a whole page, I'm not going to read everything on here, but starting, I'll run down a few things. Last fall, last summer, perhaps when it, I think it was last summer, I rehabbed one of my houses up in Northwest Indiana. It needed a lot of work. It cost me a fair amount. And I didn't write the figure down, but I think it cost me roughly $13,000. All right, but after that rehab, <clears throat> a new tenant was found. They were found in September of 2021. And the rent prior to the rehab was $800. Once it was rehabbed, it was a combination of being a better house, plus market rents had gone up. The rent became $1,250, and that's in September. So in September of 2022, I never, I haven't asked my property manager yet, will that rent be going up perhaps to $1,300 from $1,250? I don't, it may, I don't know. But that was a $450 increase in rent. Sure, I had to spend a chunk of money. But hopefully I don't have to spend that money again for years to come. But I'll keep getting that rent money. So I will recoup that money. Because if I'm getting an extra $450 a month in cash flow, in 10 months, that's $4,500. So in 12 months, that's another $900, $5,400, I guess, roughly. So in two years, we're at $11,000. So a little bit over two years, we will catch up to what we spent. But now, if rents go up to $1,300 this, in September, which I don't know that for, if it will or not, 
Oh, that's fifty dollars more. All right, another house, and I'm gonna run down a couple things real quick. Rent one from eight twenty-five to eight seventy-five. Another house, one from nine fifty to a thousand. Another house, the rent one from eight hundred to eight fifty. Another one got rehabbed a little bit, one from eight hundred to nine hundred fifty. Another one, one from eight hundred to eight fifty. One, one from a thousand fifty to eleven hundred. One, one from eight fifty to nine hundred. One stayed the same. One was seven twenty-five, went to seven fifty. Now it's getting ready to go to eight hundred. One was six hundred fifty dollars. That was low. <clears throat> that was my two one, two bedroom, one bathroom. And that one, the tenant just moved out, left it trashed. We just got it cleaned out, and it looks like they got all the junk cleaned out. They sent me pictures. It looks like it needs minimal work. Elbow grease, paint, maybe some new carpet, maybe. But the rent was six hundred fifty dollars. Now they're hoping they can get nine hundred fifty. All right, another one's going from seven twenty-five to seven seventy-five. One's and that's under market value still. But as long as that tenant stays, it'll stay there. If that tenant moves out, the rent will go up probably to eleven hundred, twelve hundred. All right, um, another one's going from nine hundred to nine fifty. Another one went from nine eighty-five to ten thirty-five, and it's now twelve hundred. All right, another one eight twenty-five. A little bit of work. New tenant nine fifty. Um, another one stayed the same. Another one is currently eight hundred. It's like eight thirty-five with a pet fee. Uh, but that tenant is moving out, and I've been told it will need a little bit of work, some paint and some flooring. I'm estimating, just guessing, five grand, plus or minus. And that rent, which is currently the eight thirty-five with a pet fee, should go up um, to a thousand eleven hundred, a thousand to eleven hundred, or even perhaps more. So it could go up between two hundred and three hundred dollars, or a bit more. And then one other one has gone from seven fifty to seven seventy five. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. So that's I may have missed one or two, <laughs> but that might have blurred together for you. You're just hearing all these numbers. But if you add all that up and looking back about twelve months from August to August of last year, that's about a one thousand nine hundred forty dollar monthly increase in rent. Think about that. You might have gotten a pay raise this year. Did you get a pay raise of almost $2,000 a month? Maybe you did. Good for you. The annually, that figure works out to $23,280. Okay. So that's, and that's looking ahead over the next one or two months also for some increases that are coming. All right. The ones that are coming, if the tenant decides they don't want to pay that extra $50 and they decide to move out, which is Unlikely because if they start looking around, they're going to realize their current rent, even if that $50 increase, is still below market rent. So odds are they'll stay. But if they decide to move out, then we'll go in and we'll do some work and we'll bump the rent up to market rent, which is probably $200 to $300 more <clears throat> than what it currently is. All right. Also, I have three houses under rehab and one of them is currently being marketed um, to be rented. And I pay cash for that house. That's my sixty thousand dollar house, all in. They're marketing it at thirteen hundred. Um, I don't know if I'll get thirteen hundred for it, but they're marketing it at thirteen hundred. Another one in Chicago is very close to getting done. Um, I don't know exactly what rent I'll get for that, but there is a tenant that's been identified. There will be a Section Eight tenant, so that one will get done. And then there's another one in Chicago that's being worked on. That'll that's still a few weeks down the road. All right, looking at alternative investments real quick. I looked at my mineral rights positions yesterday, and I have eight positions that are not in self-directed IRAs. I didn't count my houses in self-directed IRAs. I'm not counting any investment in self-directed IRAs because I'm not yet tapping into that money. All right, but out of these eight positions, I looked at, I pulled up all the map books they had sent me, going back to when I first bought, started buying the first of the eight. Map books are the information they put together showing the townships, the, uh, all of this information, but it shows their forecast. When it shows their forecast, they have their base model forecast, they have their TWE forecast. TWE is Troy Eckerd's a little bit optimistic forecast. And I looked at those two forecasts and I went with a number in between the two forecasts for a, an annualized return. I, with some of these, they're lower and they will be going up the next couple of years. Some of them are higher, and they might go down the next couple of years just a bit, okay? But I'm just going with looking at this the first year. All right, so if I took all those eight and I averaged those forecasts together, it works out to a 15.6% return, all right? 
that's not too bad. There's no, that's completely passive. Completely passive. I don't have to deal with property managers. I don't have to deal with paying for repairs. I don't have to deal with tenants. Completely hands off and passive. But with that being said, these forecasts were done up using prices such as $75 for a barrel of oil and $3.75 for a cubic unit of natural gas. Oil as of yesterday was at $120, not $75, and natural gas was at like $8.50, not $3.75. So commodity prices are higher. So those returns, that 15.6, which is pretty good, should get blown out of the water. <laughs> it should be, I don't know what it'll be. I don't know if it'll average out to be 20%. 25%, 30%. I know I do have one right now in my in a mineral um, in a self directed IRA that is averaging something like 32% or a year or something like that over the past four or five months. So I don't know exactly how it'll play out. Flipping back over to oil drilling, I have an oil drilling investment. Once again, their forecasts are based on a lower priced oil. Oil has gone up based on a lower price natural gas natural gas has gone up they're drilling two they've just recently drilled two wells those wells are producing oil and natural gas they are getting ready to start to drill two more wells and they plan to drill an additional three or four wells before the year is up their forecast will show like i'll, I'll give you a factual one uh, a few in may yeah last month in may i got 11.1 percent return Annualized that monthly amount, if you annualized it, was 11.1%. The forecasted amount for June is 19.1%. But over the past four months, every month they've beaten the forecast because prices are starting to go up. When you get paid for oil and mineral rights, you're getting paid from two to three months ago. Okay, it's not today's price because it takes a while from when they sell it to trickle down to get to the investor. So it's still being two to three months ago, prices were like $85, $90. So the price that it's at now, $120. If, someone, if oil is being sold at that price today, I wouldn't get that revenue until August or September, okay? So it'll go up. So anyway, what I'm saying is that 19.1% will probably get beaten. They're predicting a 35% high at some point using those lower prices. That 35% hopefully will get blown out of the water. It should be much higher. Only time will tell. So the point of this video is I'm not bragging about anything. Okay, I am being factual. I'm telling you what has happened. A little bit of what is coming. All right, so when it comes to investments, you may not be accredited. If you're not accredited, you can't invest in mineral rates or oil drilling. Okay, so just forget that. But you can invest in rental property. If you are a working American, I dare say you can buy a rental property. If you're 19 years old and you work a full-time job, you can probably buy a rental property. If you're 49 and you have yet bought your first rental, you can buy a rental property because that's when I bought my first ones at age 49. Okay? So with all this being said, start investing. Just take that first step. Get on the property ladder. Start climbing it. Start climbing it. Because what will happen is it starts compounding. Prices go up and you keep adding to your investments and even if we have a recession and prices drop rents don't normally drop they may stagnate but you ride it out okay it's not a big deal all right hopefully this helps some of you i know it's a little bit longer than i like it to be but that's how it goes all right so hang in there enjoy your weekend stay safe in all you do click that thumbs up please subscribe Please feel free to comment. Let me know if your rents have gone up. All right, I should have said that in the beginning. Let me know if your rental property rents have gone up. Let me know if your investments have gone up. All right, good enough. Maskey is signing out.